So what I want you to do is to consider an astronaut, all right? Now, this astronaut in um, his slash her spaceship uh, is, is traveling along at impressive speed, as you can see. Well, one of the tricky things about being an astronaut, being out in space, is that you miss what we use to work out how fast you're going, right? Because if you're in a car and you're hurtling along the highway, then what the, the scenery around you is moving, yeah? So you're like, I have a sensation of going fast or I have a sensation of going slow. Uh, and I, I can see, you know, things around me changing. I can, I can know, oh, I was, I was in Cherrybrook and now I'm in the city, it took me an hour, so I've traveled this fast, right? An astronaut has no such thing. Does anyone know what the phrase is, by the way? The thing that they're missing, that we have, that, that they can't, that helps them be unable to tell, yeah. Frame of reference. A frame of reference, that's exactly what it's called. When you're out in space, right, especially when you're out in like proper space, everything is just it's all just black murkiness, right? No, no planets or other things nearby because space is big. So poor old astronaut here has got no frame of reference, no outside information to be able to say how fast, how fast am I going like by, by looking around and, and how far have I gone, right? But of course, you know, it's a, it's a rocket, so it's got all this instrumentation, okay? So let's suppose the astronaut does know how fast it's going, how fast he or she is going, based on, you know, putting out a certain amount of thrust knows how much that thrust is compared to the mass of the, the, the spaceship, and so knows its velocity at any given time. So let's just jot that down for a second. If the velocity is known, but nothing else is known, like there are no markers out there in space, so it's like, you know, you are entering the, the M2, and you get off the M2, and then you know how far you've gone, right? If you have known velocity and unknown displacement. What do we do with this? Okay, now I point this out because what we've been doing so far in calculus has been the reverse of this, right? We know some kind of um, quantity like a position or how much water is in a, a tank or uh, something like that and we want to work out from that well, how is that changing, right? And velocity is just how displacement is changing over time. Yeah, so velocity slash speed, I'm just going to lump them together for now. Um, things like, say, kilometers per hour. Kilometers per hour? That is a change in displacement or position compared to a change in time, right? So, for example, if I said 60 kilometers per hour as a velocity, that means that for every hour that I change, I change 60 kilometers in terms of distance, right? So this is kind of like a gradient. We know how to find this thing. We know how to find velocity. We differentiate to find that, right? But what if we don't know the thing to differentiate to get to here? How do we come back to this, okay? So what we're gonna do is, let's imagine an actual concrete situation so we can get a visual on what is happening, okay? I'm gonna give you some, um, some silly numbers. They're all more car related numbers because we've got a better sense of what they're like. Um, just because, you know, these guys are traveling at whatever, tens of kilometers per, per minute or something like that, something really crazy. So let's try and um, break it down a little bit. So if, for example, said rocket is going at 60 kilometers per hour for two hours, for the first two hours of the journey. Yes, it's a very slow rocket. I don't know, he gets motion sickness or something like that. So taking it easy, okay? And then thereafter, travels at 100 kilometers per hour, okay? So just imagine what's happening. Heading along, lifts off from the launch pad, is traveling at that speed for exactly two hours, and then after that, you know, fires the boosters or something like that and goes faster for the rest of their journey, okay? Now, what would this actually look like? We can draw a graph of this. If, for instance, we said, we imagine starting our journey at position zero and time zero. Let's give some names to these things. So let's say this displacement, right? Let's call it f of x, okay? So I've got f of x on my vertical axis and I've got x over here. What does displacement depend on? Well, it's something based on time, doesn't it? If we want to work out something about this, we need to work out how long we've been doing everything. So let's call that time, the horizontal axis, and we'll call this guy displacement. Okay, let's consider the first two hours of this journey. We'll worry about the change in speed a little later on. What is this graph going to look like? If we start at ground zero, okay, then here we are at zero displacement and zero time, okay? 
And then in the blink of an eye, we're traveling at 60 kilometers per hour. What does that graph look like? If the speed doesn't change, they're getting further and further away from where they started. So it's going to go up and the speed isn't changing, but the speed is kind of like a, well, if it's the derivative, it's the gradient, isn't it? Right? So the gradient isn't changing. It just stays at 60. Okay? So let me draw something that looks like that. There you go. Stays at 60. Uh, this is for one hours, two hours. There we go. We can put some information on here. Let's suppose I want to work out where have we ended? Where are we? What is the displacement after that amount of time? It's going to be after two hours? 120, right? Now, just pause for a minute and think about how you did that, right? Because I haven't given you a displacement function. I haven't told you what the equation of this thing is. But you inferred what would happen here based on a known velocity. Does that make sense? You know how fast you're going. You know it's not changing, so that gives you a straight line. And you can work out this number by saying, well, two lots of 60 will give me 120. Is that okay? So far, so good. But then the rocket changes speed. It increases speed dramatically, right? So therefore, I'm going to have what uh, a piecemeal function, right? It's going to change its gradient. It won't be 60 anymore. It'll be 100. Does that make sense? So what's that going to look like on my graph? Yeah, it's steeper. That's exactly right. So instead of just like this, it might be something like that, right? Except he started from 120 kilometers away from where he began. So something that looks like maybe this. Is that okay? You can see it's steeper. Now I want to emphasize again, you do not know what this displacement is. You don't know what any of these equations are, but you are inferring what is happening based on these known velocities. Does that make sense? Okay. So now I'm going to pose a question to you. And uh, we can work it all out just from, we can work at the answer that is, just from all of the numbers that are on here. Okay. The question is, how far does the astronaut travel from the first hour to the third hour. This chunk of time in here, let's just suppose he's, he's not interested in the first hour. She's not interested in that first hour. What I'm interested in is this spot here, how far is it from that spot to that spot there? From the first hour to the third hour. Does that make sense? So the question is from the time at one hour till the time three hours, comma, how far does the astronaut travel? A more technical way to say that is what's the displacement over the course of that interval? Okay, now you can help me work this out, can't you? How am I going to find out? how far the astronaut travels, given all this information. Known velocity, but I'm trying to work out something about displacement when I don't even know what the function is. What am I going to do? Any suggestions? Let me ask this question again, but with a preface. If you were in year seven, and I gave you this information, and this question, with no graph, no nothing, you could work it out, couldn't you? How far is traveled? If you want to know how far you travel from A to B, you just need to know where A is and where B is, don't you? And then the distance is just the difference between those, okay? Well, you already know how far you're going to be here, don't you? How far are you going to be when X equals 1? This is going to be 60, okay? And you inferred that from the velocity, because that's known, right? Hmm, they have to think for a little bit. You're at 60 here. This is our starting point that we're considering for that. Where are we going to end? Think about what happens from hour two to hour three. How fast is the astronaut traveling? She's traveling. I'm going to come to that answer in a second. How fast is, she, is he, she traveling? She's traveling at 100 kilometers per hour, right? So they're starting at 120 at that point, and then they go 100 kilometers per hour per hour for one hour, yeah? Which lands them therefore at. 220. Is that okay? That's where I've ended up. First leg of the journey, second leg of the journey, 
here's my distance. And I'm going to mark that in. If you've got another color, it'll be useful. You use this, I suppose. The total distance is just, whoops, I need another marker on here, sorry. From A to B, you just go distance to B, take away the distance to A. That guy there, right? Now, before we write down what that number is, I want you to see how we calculate it. If my function here, this weird piecemeal function that I don't even know what it is, right? If it's equal to 220 there, it's, I'm interested in that value because it's f of 3. Do you see that? That's where I am. x equals 3, the y value will be f of 3. Is that OK? I should say the vertical coordinate, because there actually is no y on here. Okay? And then what I subtract to get the difference is this value. But what's that? f of, f of 1, because that's my starting point. Is that OK? Is that right? That, of course, is 220 take away 60, so it is 160. That's the answer, right? How far does the astronaut travel? Answer, 160 kilometers. Not complicated.